Hey loves, I hope you're doing well and slash or <laughs> doing the best that you can in this moment. I'm really excited about today's video. It feels very much um, spirit led to be talking about this with you today because I've played another video and then I just stuff happened where I'm like, hmm, it's giving that I'm supposed to talk about how to connect with your ancestors. So that's what we'll be getting into today. I've been feeling this like um, bubbling up of curiosity from a lot of people around me. And now that I've been like actively, intentionally engaging with my ancestors for about two years and still building and still growing, I think it's important for me to be more open about the things that I've learned up to this point, what's been helpful for me. So hopefully that can just be another resource in your beautiful journey. So let's get into it. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> let's do two, two. Light it up. Like, doo, doo, doo. I have some notes and some like different points that I want to get to. But it'll be mostly speaking from the heart. Hashtag me, <laughs> Fletcher. So the first thing that came to mind in thinking about um, what I might have told myself when starting out my journey of connection is to give gratitude for the fact that you've heard the call. That's such a beautiful thing. It's so exciting to even get to that place of curiosity about who you come from and the impact that they still have on your life, like seeing that connectedness where it's often been like taken. So get excited about the fact that you've, through whatever way that's happened for you, that you've come to this place of wanting to connect with yourself and do that connect with spirit i think once it clicks in that you're wanting to like go on a spiritual journey i think for me in the beginning it felt stressful because the way i got to that point was like just like all these different ways of seeing people on their own spiritual journey and at the point that i came to like wanting to connect deeper i think i was very quick to get agitated at the fact that I was not like <laughs> years into my journey the first day starting, if that makes sense. Like I was wanting to not even just dive in head first, but like really skip steps because I was not necessarily always sitting and being present with the fact that it was beautiful that I had even got into the point of hearing the call. So in moments where maybe you're finding yourself caught up in next step, next step, what do I do, what do I do? To also send some breath and like gratitude to the fact that you're connected enough to even have felt the pull. And I think part of that also is like spend some time reflecting and seeing the ways that your ancestors have already been present in your life to bring you to this point. Because for me, I think I came into like my spiritual awareness. You're thinking about manifestation and like creating the life that I wanted. I was more peaceful and filling and I just felt, <laughs> you know, <laughs> solid <laughs> um, because I very much was not feeling that way. And as I was seeking to like, you know, connect with my spirits more and work with them, a big thing for me was like looking back at my life up to the point of like being more of an aware participant <laughs> in that like exchange and seeing all of the ways that they had already blessed my life. One, by even making it possible, we love to see it. <laughs> but also like, I was like, wait, I was daydreaming about this thing and would sit in my room talking to myself about it. And then it happened. And then it, it had also happened for this thing and this thing and this thing. So even just giving thanks for what they've given up to this point that we might not be aware of. Just a moment of gratitude, I guess, is <laughs> my first tip for connection. It grounds like, the beginnings of the journey in that sense of like, wow, it's awesome when I get to connect. That's <laughs> what a gift it is. Another mindset thing that I think is pretty important is getting in tune with why you're wanting to connect with your ancestors in a more active way, why you're wanting to build a relationship with them. You might be hearing many like, um, duh, because <laughs> my ancestors which is like yeah that's a good enough reason for me i was just feeling really disconnected confused very much lost in the wind just being <laughs> learning about not you know really having a sense of rootedness that i was really craving yeah just ask yourself why and just spend time sitting with that and really letting it soak in <laughs> because in moments of density or where things feel stagnant it feels like oh, i'm not progressing 
I don't even know what my gifts are, why can't I hear them, nothing's working, that kind of thing. It can just be helpful to, <laughs> to have that to anchor you, to know that all of that is part of it too, one, and that you have this deep drive, this deep connection that's pulling you to engage with spirit in this way, and that will continue to propel you. I also think the sense of why is really nice for helping you maybe navigate the I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> Just the general like social media and internet atmosphere around spirituality. There's a lot of like really awesome information that will really resonate with you and really that you can like be like, oh wait, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> kind of like something that I would want to apply. But when you have that sense of why, if something is like just not even in conversation with that and someone's telling you it's something you need to be doing and it's not really hitting, <laughs> you're like, but I want to connect so that I can heal <laughs> and be really present for my spirits and I'm less maybe caught up with how to manifest quick and how to do this and this and this and the kind of urgency that ends up seeping into messages around spirituality. I think it's really helpful to have that why. It can evolve and it can be really expansive and it can be like, well, I kind of want <laughs> all of that, but in terms of grounding that really core principle, just checking with yourself, just spend some time sitting with that question of why am I feeling called to this? It could be according to general about whether my life has even brought me to this point, why am I even feeling curious right now in a way that maybe I haven't before or have I always been expressing you know some of these curiosities and now I have the courage or the energy to go for it it's cool to be curious about these things especially at the beginning of the journey to keep it playful and exciting so that you are encouraged to continue delving deeper and deeper even in the moments where it feels difficult <laughs> because of course there will be those moments so get in touch with your why and let it take you where you need to go <laughs> so another way to kind of like open yourself up to um connecting with spirit connecting with your loving ancestors who are so excited to show up for you is to really tune into your body because so much of this connection like even as i'm saying like how to connect with them it's not to imply that you haven't been connected to them like you are of them they are working actively in your life it's like how to like clear the now i'm seeing like someone cleaning a window but like not even just that it was cloudy before but like if there was like a layer of mud on your window and you have that like thing that I'm just hearing the sound of mud like peeling away off the window, that's so nice. But it feels like that kind of thing of opening yourself up and creating space in the container for connection and like clearing off the, the muck that has made it seem like that connection is not there. So one thing is um, tuning into your body um, in the ways that feel good to you because that's your first altar. That's like such a beautiful way to honor your ancestors to honor this body that they made possible through them being and just all of the deliciousness of that so nourishing your body in the best ways that you can moving it from place of love i like to sing dance tune into like touch read journal i don't know just all the things <laughs> other things and just picking the ones that you know resonate on any particular day i think especially starting out it can be intimidating hearing everyone talking about all their altars and feeding all their spirits and doing it seems like just a lot of doing and for me like especially at the beginning of my journey when i was like embarking on the journey because I was in such a rough place it felt so overwhelming to think that I would have to do so many things like outside of myself but once I heard someone say your body is your first ultra I feel like I heard it on the little juju podcast probably but it'll be in the um description because that's like such a great resource for starting out with Buddha specifically but yes once I heard your body is your first ultra I was like click I was like wow yes like when I'm feeding myself well that is connecting with my ancestors and I can even call that in that through me, through this meal, through this nourishment, through this act of like taking the time to 
crooked and all that that like through all of those acts i am letting myself heal i'm letting my lineage heal so leaning into the things that make you feel really <laughs> charged up and connected also maybe just like really restful and you know you just feel in it <laughs> that can be a great way for like just creating that container of openness so as you continue to tap into and nurture the beautiful altar that is your body it can also be a great time to create a space to honor your ancestors so get into a little ancestor altar moment yeah it's just in terms of giving that sense of connection seeing like um, a physical embodiment i guess of you know a space to go to to i don't know do all the things talk cry pray laugh give offerings in the same way that you know with some mindset shifts you create some space in the mind as you open up space in the body and all of these things kind of opening up space the altar is very much like another space <laughs> for your spirit to make itself clear to you and for you to make yourself clear to spirit as well. It's a beautiful portal space between you and your physical presence here and the very loving presence of the spirits that are working with you. Depending on um, like your living situation, how open you are about your spiritual practice, the like form that this takes can definitely differ in terms of where it's located, to what size, all that. I personally practice hoodoo, so there are like specific ways to go about it. I'll link a video below. I just love Juju, I guess. Yes, I do. She has a really good video about um, setting up an altar space for hoodoo, so for black folks. I love y'all. In terms of like basics, I'd say having some kind of like water and then a candle is a really, really solid place to start. Because it, especially if you're in a situation where you can't be as open, that could even be something that you, you know, you just have a glass of water and a candle just to like pray. And it could kind of be like a temporary thing. But yeah, I think setting up your altar is a really great time to check in with your spirits and to start building that ability to like hear them or understand them, like seeing if, when you're thinking about setting up your altar, if your eye is going to particular things that you have that maybe they would like, or in your mind's eye, you're seeing some coffee or <laughs> just like things that they would maybe want on it, or you see like how they might want it set up, or as you're going to set it up, you're like, mm. something out that's feeling off and you rearrange and it feels better, those kinds of things. I think it's a great time to start listening and making sense of those cues even when it feels like the smallest little nudges and really honoring that as you're setting up the sacred space because yeah of course there are like common practices and maybe different traditions that have you know systems of doing things and at the same time it's a space for your ancestors so ask them their input you know <laughs> ask them how they would like to see the space what they'd like to see in the space what would make them you know, excited to commune at that space with you. And when it comes to your altar, I think this is another, you know, area where the messages on, you know, spiritual TikTok and <laughs> YouTube and other spaces can start to seep in and having like a really basic altar can sometimes feel, okay, yeah, let's talk about this. <laughs> if you have an altar that seems you know, basic and you have just the most simple elements and you have your water and your candle and you're vibing with that. Do your best to release the sense of comparison that can sometimes creep in, especially with this very like physical manifestation. For me, sometimes I would just feel like I wasn't doing enough and then I would get caught in this loop of it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough at the altar. When the main offering or the, the purpose of the altar is to have that space to connect and to share that like really heartfelt sense of dedication, I guess, to connecting with your folks. And if that's through water and a candle, or you have this huge ornate table and you have all these things, it doesn't 
really matter. <laughs> the thing that is meant to be at the root of either of those is that sense of connection, that sense of presence, the sense of seeing each other, getting to be in that space and feel that in or oh, that's heightened. And for you to show care and for them to you know, reciprocate that. And you could have all the things <laughs> on your altar. Especially with spiritual technology, you can have all kinds of crystals and, I don't know, oracle decks and whatever people do. And then by the time you're actually hearing your spirits, they're like, we never even really needed that. I don't really like that stuff, <laughs> like putting things on because you're copying the way that someone else is doing it, when it's not actually even resonating. That's not to say you have to do it perfectly and only ever. <laughs> you know, put the things that is exactly as your spirits told you because, you know, things are still maybe getting crossed up or lost in communication as you're opening that channel. So, of course, also still be kind to yourself and know that your loving ancestors are, they're not like mad at you for learning. <laughs> it's very much a learning process. And also just release yourself from the pressure of trying to like perform spirituality through this like space. And sometimes, you know, if you're able to do a grand moment and that feels really good and everything on that altar feels like it was put there intentionally and like there are, you know, spirits on the other side really receptive to, to all of that, then do that. But also don't underestimate the power that you have with your water and your candle. And yeah, make it happen when it feels right. Use what you have and let the magic begin <laughs> and once that altar is set up make sure that you are spending some quality time there whatever that looks like to you and your spirits i've heard i think when i was beginning my journey and listening to different people's advice about you know starting up kind of in the, the same way that i'm now paying forward <laughs> a lot of folks said to like at least go to your altar once a week and really sit and spend some dedicated time it's a beautiful sacred space that you've created in conversation with your spirits so it's the perfect space to continue to be in conversation with them speaking out loud if you're able to whether that be praying or just you know talking shit and <laughs> working through the things in your life whether that be sitting quietly in meditation whether that be sitting quietly not being particularly meditative but just chilling there whether that be crying singing dancing, laughing, let yourself be witnessed by the spirits that are so excited to continue holding you in your journey. I think it's here at the altar space that so much of the like work actually happens, so much of the development happens. It doesn't even have to be at the physical space, but like intentionally spending time with your spirits is so much of how things will be revealed. Another component of saying like open to that connection and curious as you're building it and building confidence in it. Something that's been helpful for me is just like asking for signs and just being <laughs> very explicit about them, asking for specific things and being receptive when I see them. So whatever it is, if it's a flower or a song or a specific phrase, it could be whatever. And it's a good moment to like implement a little first thought, best thought kind of vibe, like as you're like, okay, what sign should I ask for? I say go with the first one, even if it seems like random and hard to come across, because then that can really, you know, help you <laughs> know for sure that, that that is for you. And I think so much of it is being open when you do receive that confirmation, because I'm getting this energy of like some folks maybe writing it off as coincidences um, to kind of ignore the call still. So as you are building that trust, be open to the signs as you receive them and be open to not necessarily privileging logic as the end all be all and the most true thing as you're tapping into this knowledge that might be more, you know, intuitive and more in your body. But that doesn't make you less real. And it feels like your spirits are very excited to see you embrace that and to see where that takes you. It really opens up your ideas of what is possible. Then that, that obviously is bound to find its way <laughs> into all corners of your life. So yes, those are some of my little tips, <laughs> things that I've learned along the way. I feel some people's folks just 
really jumping with joy um, at you even having the courage to be curious, to seek out information, and to be present with them, to co-create with them. Um, they're so excited for what that means for you, for your family, for your lineage. So many beautiful and important healing, nurturing things in store. So yes, thank you so much for watching, for spending this time with me. Um, I'm excited to keep delving into these kinds of topics and answering you know, what spirit is calling me to do. Sending out lots of love. Um, I'm excited to see another video soon.